All right, bit of a progress update on the Ace Magic F3A HX370 main PC. I've been running tests on this main PC after giving it a little dose of 5600 MHz RAM. So I got it set up like this, trying to get as much airflow into that and without um, this plastic cover potentially trapping extra heat um, from this fan because it's blowing down in there. Ideally, all that air should be vented out through these vents, but honestly, I'm getting better temperatures by just removing the cover and having this sit like this. But anyways, brief testing, haven't finished testing because it's a very time consuming process of running it at many different power levels, but base level specs were okay, but they are below the B-Link HX, uh, Sir 9 HX370. And once I added the 5600 meg transfer RAM, uh, let's see. Yes, here's the Steel Nomad test. You can see that there was a very, very tiny improvement. And basically, the faster RAM doesn't help a whole lot. It does in release a bit of the bottleneck. So on the default settings, the CPU works harder, the temperatures go up. Um, it's not until I start increasing the power level from... Uh, whatever the default was, to 54 watts, to 65 watts, to 75 watts, and to 85 watts, that uh, the CPU works a little bit harder, but the gains are really, really tiny. There's something else holding back the mini PC. It's a little bit clearer once I've started running Time Spy. You can see there's a clear improvement once I go to 65 watts and yeah, sort of 75 watts. It goes up a little bit more. I don't think 85 watts is going to show actual improvement, but I got to run more tests. And here you can see the GPU score has been going from 33,358, and it went down to 5,600 megatransfers because the temperatures started well, thermal throttling. This F3A is super sensitive to the ambient temperature. If it is warm in the room, it thermal throttles really quickly. If it's chilly in the room, temperatures perform really well. So that throws off the testing and everything, but increasing the power level in the BIOS, if you, I think it's like control F1 or something, and you get more BIOS options and you can mess around with the AMD SMU options to increase the power limit. And it's really finicky, but it's everything that I've been testing so far, I haven't caused any crashes, but I am disappointed that it's not providing as large of any gains that I would really like to see. The fan in particular is very quiet, so it's hard for me to tell, like, hey, is it actually spinning up? It does eventually spin up if it gets super hot. But again, here we go for Fire Strike. We can see there are some gains once we've been using the 5600 mega transfer RAM and a higher power level um, from, like, 75 watts here. But from the defaults, if you just plug in 5600 mega transfer RAM, it doesn't actually improve temper uh, performance and it sort of reduces it. Like you see, for some reason, the CPU performance went down and I don't know if that's because my ambient temperature was higher or not. I should have paid more attention to that. And let's see, Night Raid, similar story. 5600 mega transfer performance went down um, compared to the 4800 mega transfer per second. That should not be the case, but Whatever the case is, once you increase the power level, you actually start seeing tiny little bit of improvement. And the temperatures, well, the CPU temperature especially when goes up. The iGPU temperature, it does struggle to go up. Now, where's the interesting one? Here's Pathmark. Okay, so I haven't done the 65 watt test with that one yet. But, let's see. Da, da, da. Yeah, okay, so it went down when I upgraded the RAM. Performance went down. And it's not until I improve up, up the power limits and that we see some improvement. And 85 watts, at that point, you're not seeing any gains. So if you go to like 65 watts or 75 watts, that's pretty good. Um, you do not have to go higher than that. You just don't see much of an improvement, except for 2D graphics per mark performance. Hmm, okay. And let's see, sign bench. Yeah, this was where I was like, yeah, this is getting really weird. The single thread performance went down with the faster RAM, and the multi thread performance went way down with the faster RAM. 
that was pretty bad. So, and, it, and I think it's pretty much just temperatures at the at this point. Um, this 40 millimeter fan that is on the F3A, it moves barely any air. It's so primarily focused on being low noise, it just moves barely any air. And as you can see, the SSD doesn't really have any heatsink. It does have a thermal pad. Then it goes to this uh, whatever metal plastic painted plate here, but that's not really for like heat transfer and whatnot. Like this is not a very good thermal conductor. And yeah, the RAM just gets warm. But overall performance isn't bad. It's just a very smidge better than the previous generation of Zen 4 CPUs. And let's see, I can go ahead and try and show on this tiny little bit of screen here, the BIOS options. Okay, let's go ahead and restart this thing. Mash the delete key while it's restarting to get into the BIOS. And hopefully, I can remember the key combo to reveal the other BIOS options. This is kind of like a real fun little thing if you're like really into overclocking and messing around with BIOS. Ta-da! Then this might be your jam. And I have gave it a try with uh, the Sur 9, and you can get a little bit of an overclock with the Sur 9. That's relatively easily easy because Tech Tablets did a really handy guide on how you should overclock and you get like about two to four percent more performance who's that's amazing not really um all right so let's see okay so this is the expanded bios that i have been messing around with let's see control f1 oh yes control f1 release reveals the advanced bios and hides it so for everybody who's like i just got an f3a this is the default BIOS that you see. There's not going to be much options, and the advanced doesn't even show you, let's see, the SMU options. I don't even know if you can see the uh, GPU um, dedicated memory option. So, yeah, you, you really don't get much options. So, Control F1 shows the more advanced menu. And let's see, AMD CBS. This is the main one that you want to mess around with, SMU common options. And all of this is what I have been messing around with to get it to 85 watts, okay? And there are certain things, like this TDC, VDC, CR, and this thing. Um, I increase them. You just keep them to the defaults. I don't remember exactly what they are, but I'm going to go reset this thing, and we'll take a quick look and see how it all looked. Oh yeah, I try, tried creating a manual fan temperature table here. Did not work. And uh, stap M control. I switched to manual for stap M to be shut off. I think that might be good, maybe? Anyways, uh, it's not like this is a laptop, so you don't need stap M. It's kind of the same issue with the 8700G and 8600G when they released stap M, just kind of screwed around with it. So I turned it off here just to be safe. It does nothing. Anyways, uh, system configuration, 54 watts. You want to go from auto to 54 watts. I wish it went higher. Um, sustained power limits, milliwatts, so switch that to 85. You just type in the number that you want. So if you want 75 watts, you 75,000. Uh, 75,000 here, 75,000. And you may have to switch from auto to manual to get that option. Okay, let's see. TJ Maxx, I, that's default to 85, but uh, oh, that's way too high. I switched it to 100. It does sort of do a thing, but you it really does try to struggle to get hot. Ace, whatever Ace Magic's cooler is on there, it works relatively well. It just it gets heat soaked. I, I guess that's the best way of describing it. Once enough too much heat builds up in the heat sink, it struggles to exhaust that heat. So there's like pockets somewhere in there where heat is being trapped. I don't know exactly how or where, but thermal camera and you'll get a better idea. Anyways, manual fan control table doesn't do a darn thing. I just forced everything to like 100. Doesn't do anything. Um, let's see, what else? Oh yeah, smart shift control. This is the other one. So 
if you switch this from auto or enable it and then you switch everything to the, the actual GDP you want. Um, let's say I want everything to be 5,400 and everything that I have been messing around with. Yeah, so that, that enables it to be 54 watts. Cool, yeah, that's great. Um, actually, I probably want to switch that all down to... There we go. And this was like... I don't remember what this was. Um, you know what? I've messed around with this so much. Let's go back and uh, restore defaults. Yes. Okay, then that probably should reset everything. Control F1, AMD, CBS. SMU common options. Okay, yeah, this looks about normal. See, so, yeah, 85 watts. Uh, I'm going to change that to 95. And these are the de default TDC and EDC settings. I I tried it increasing that. It didn't do anything. It scares the heck out of me that I don't know what this does. But, yeah, smart shift control is the main one. So we switch that to manual. Enable. 5400. There we go. Um, yeah, that, that does the thing. Okay, and then Stap M, manual. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, yeah, that, that's all zero now. And then, let's see, PPT, 54. Uh, 300, there we go. And this thing, let's change that to sustain power limb. Eh, this is stat M, but whatever. Okay. And this to 54 watts. Okay, so there we go. That's to 54 watts. Everything you see, like 54,000, if you want to go to 65, you change that to 65,000. Okay, cool. Um, what else? da 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 GFX configuration. Ah, here we go. iGPU enabled and 8 gigabytes. I mean, you can go to 16 or 24 gigabytes, but this thing is equipped with 32 gigabytes, so don't go too crazy with that. Uh, if you have 128 gigabytes, I mean, hey, what are you losing uh, going to 24 gigabytes? <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, 24 gigabytes is plenty. Like, Alrighty, so that's pretty much all the messy round stuff that I want to do there and save, changes, and exit. That's, boom, ta-da, that is how you mess around with the SMU common options for the Ace Magic F3A. Man, yeah, I wish this thing had a little bit more of a gusty fan going around to the top, that would be cool, or maybe a meaty heatsink. But, that's a mod for a future time, and future me, while well, I run more tests. Anyways, while I have rambled about that, I'm working on other projects here. I want to build a cyber deck. So this has got the B-Link Sur 9 HX370 in there. Ta-da! That's going to be one heck of a crazy powerful deck thing. And yeah, it's quite literally, I just screwed it right in there. So that's as fun as it is. And I have so much reprinting to go with this thing. But once I'm done with it, yeah. Yeah, I'll have magnets to actually hold that in place, but then it'll have a keyboard and a little touchy thing, and this whole thing is a touch screen. Oh, and a little radio antenna. Okay. Yeah, anyways, I'm having fun with this. Um, every few months, I want to build myself a new cyber deck, and that's what I'm making a model over there. That is very time-consuming. Anyways, so yeah, running more tests, and just going to keep running tests and stuff. Um, good heavens, yeah. I'm gonna keep changing it up and yeah this this is my test up setup Ta -da. all right anyways everybody have a good day good sunday good whatever day it is for you and enjoy yourself have fun don't waste all your time running tests and test intelligently okay yeah let's have a good one Bye bye